What's going on, guys? Uh, welcome to your last, maybe there's one more, I don't know, close to the end, very close, uh, Java game applet tutorial again with me, Travis. It's been great uh, teaching you guys. Uh, definitely appreciate all the, you know, the support you've given me. All thumbs up and subscribing and be like, hey, this is great, serious, thanks, man. Appreciate it because, you know, obviously I work kind of hard on it. So seeing that it actually is helpful, um, I definitely, you know, appreciate that. So thanks again, guys, for watching and subscribing. Let's just jump into it. Uh, as you can see, we have a ton of code here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to check our click statement. And if there was a click and if our mouse in variable is set to true, we know that that click occurred while, uh, while our mouse was within, you know, the try again box. Make sense? But the first thing that we have to do is we have to go up to the top of our screen and implement another listener that's going to be the mouse listener. So we can listen for click events um, because the motion listener just kind of looks for, you know, motion like we, we just did, you know, um, with menus and stuff. But we also want a click listener. So we're going to say mouse listener and that's going to be, you know, including clicks. And then we are going to add the implement methods that we need to implemented methods and then again within our initialize method we need to add the mouse listener so shows I am again referring to the variables we set up so again within uh, you know we have some options here if our mouse exits the applet we can do something if the mouse enters the applet at a certain area we can do something you know according to uh, the position again we can get that information from the E I mean that's pretty cool. So like if you want, you could just have uh, if their mouse leaves the applet, you could be like, "Hey sucker, don't hit that exit button," you know, stuff like that if you wanted to. So that's what those two mean. Mouse clicked is pretty obvious. That's what we're uh, we're going to um, talk about. And then uh, mouse pressed. That's the second it gets pressed. And mouse released is when it gets released, which is uh, also pretty cool. So those are the five methods we have access to when we add a mouse listener so let's jump into it we are just gonna go within this mouse clicked method and what we're gonna do is again say if mouse in if that's true we know we are within our uh, boundary box so that's where we're gonna reset our game how are we gonna do this well let's just try and call the start method because again let's go up here we have a ton of code uh, the start method, we create our ball, you know, uh, I mean, whatever. We're pretty much uh, starting up the whole game. So let's just see what happens, you know. Let's see if we can just make it easy. So it's looking pretty good. You know, we die and we're like, okay. But as you notice, something's not quite right the next time we start it. It's kind of weird. Um, and you know not everything gets reset so that's kind of uh, you know a bummer um, so we could either try and fix this that's pretty cool alright we could either try and fix this if we want uh, or you know we could do something else so we're going to go back into our code instead of saying start here we're just going to kind of set up our own variables to end the game uh, the first thing that we want to do is adjust the ball back to uh, you know what it originally was so when we go into the ball class you know we have the gravity back at 15 energy loss I don't think we ever mesh, mess with that um, but you know have some of these other things the exact same um, so you know it doesn't mess up the max speed agility uh, you know all, all that so anyways let's go into the starting point class and get our ball back to the default of what it should be when a game starts so we're gonna set up our B variable and all we're gonna do is set our B to be um, you know we don't have to say null but yeah you just wanna set it to null um, again you don't have to do that but all I'm saying there is we're cleaning out the ball uh, and then we're just gonna say new uh, ball kind of the same way that we defined it previously within our start method once we scroll back up here so our ball B another thing that we want to do have the score to zero so let's scroll down 
back to you know where we have our game over pretty much happening um, we can leave a little comment for us uh, game over or start new game so we have that happening what else do we want we want uh, the pictures dot level uh, back equal to B1 so then let's go back to our start method kind of see what else we did uh, we set up both of our platforms here and also our items as you can see there so that's pretty awesome uh, let's just cut that stuff make it simple for us so we're gonna cut that or copy that so it's pretty much the exact same so far as our start method you know again our start method was kind of giving us some, some problems so again we could have adjusted the start method but just to you know kind of be lazy and not worry about anything and just kind of duplicate code which you aren't supposed to I mean if you're a good programmer you don't want to duplicate anything you don't have to write things you know more than once that's kind of the goal but who cares you know we're just trying to finish the game so we're just gonna make it easy so we're gonna do that uh, set up again our platforms back to where they were when we started the game um, when we constructed the game the first time it'll also set up random items for each one of our items within our item array and what else do we want we want the mouse end variable because this is true at the moment we want to set this mouse end to be false as well so we're gonna say mouse in um, to be false Um, so one other thing that we have to uh, fix from last tutorial that we didn't do is scroll up to our mouse moved and as you can see I threw in this if game over because before if we didn't have this variable we could click that area even though there's no text on our screen and it restart the game so we wouldn't want that we want to check if the game's over and then also if you know our mouse is within that area it's gonna set the mouse in to be true and then if they click it's gonna you know start over the game as well but see again we adjusted this mouse in to be false but if we didn't have this if game over here we could still trigger the mouse in to be true if it was just within that area even if the game wasn't over so that's why we had this if statement here uh, surrounding all of these other if statements here so you might want to throw that in there and that's pretty much it, I believe. So let's save this, test it out. And uh, I thought of a couple other, you know, a couple other last tutorials we could do um, because some people didn't like the overlapping of the platform. So um, we might fix that real quick, and then also show you how to upload it onto your website. But uh, as for now, it's looking decent, right? I think we got everything to start a brand new game. Oh, except for our score. Looks like our score continues. So let's let's uh, fix that real quick. Pretty simple. Sorry, I always just want to just keep playing video games. I don't know. I don't know what that's about. I'm just like, yeah, screw the tutorial. Let's just play this game for a while. Um, but you know, pretty simple. We just set our score equal to zero, and that should pretty much complete it, guys. So I'll catch you in the next tutorial where we're going to fix like the platform thing because someone wanted to uh, you know, discuss how to fix that. And I'll catch you later. Have a good one, guys.